Vekoma is a Dutch roller coaster manufacturer that's had a pretty turbulent history. Coaster enthusiasts used to cringe at the word Vekoma because all they could think about was their old SLCs and boomerangs. But they had a right to because those rides are garbage. But over the past decade, we've seen Vekoma redefine their image with new leadership that would change the way people think of the manufacturer. Now whenever they announce a big new ride, you can bet it'll be smooth, fast-paced, and a whole lot of fun. Unfortunately so far, we haven't seen many of these new Vekomas come to America. They're primarily situated in Europe and Asia. Now although I haven't been to Asia, I did go on a big European coaster trip last summer where I rode a lot of the new gen Vekomas people have been raving about. So today, I want to stack them up against each other while also including some rare old Vekomas that stood out as genuinely good rides. But there are some caveats with this list. Despite the title Top 10 Vekoma Roller Coasters in the World, I'm only including coasters I've ridden. Likely two of the best Vekomas there are have recently opened at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. These include Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot and Tron Light Cycle Run at Magic Kingdom. Eventually, I'll get on these things, but for the time being, I don't have any plans to do so, meaning they'll have to be excluded from the list. I'd also like to give some honorable mentions before we get started. These are rides that didn't quite make the cut, but still stand out as solid attractions. In Vertigo at King's Island, Lou Guru at Wallaby, Belgium, Colorado Adventure at Fantasia Land, Express Platform 13 at Wallaby, Holland, and all of the modern Vekoma family inverts I've ridden thus far. I'm talking Dragonflyer at Dollywood, Dragon at Energylandia, Freedom Flyer at Fonspot Orlando, Insomnia at Cataplume, Orcanon at Fair Up Summerland, and Phoenix at Dino's Wonder Wheel Park. With that out of the way, let's dive into the top 10. Number 10, Hall's Uberkopf at Erlebnis Park Trip Drill. Starting us off at the number 10 spot, we've got right away a next generation Vekoma. Of the bunch I rode in Europe, this one didn't stand out as anything too impressive though. As much as I was let down by the forces and what looks to be a couple airtime moments, it's still a dramatic improvement to what is the average Vekoma SLC. Paul's Uberkopf is the first time we've seen Vekoma delve into their new STC model. For those of you who don't know, SLC means Suspended Looping Coaster, and STC is Suspended Thrill Coaster. That said, I find the names to be a little mixed up because the SLC feels a lot more intense and the STC still goes upside down. Whatever the case, Hall's Uberkopf is pretty smooth and has lots of graceful inversions and transitions. The park also took their time to give it some theming, rounding out a good overall experience. Number 9, Great Nor'easter at Maury's Piers. Yeah, the STC is an improvement to the SLC, but only if your park's name is isn't Maury's Piers. I rode this coaster in 2021 and it proved that the SLC layout isn't the problem at all. Matter of fact, the layout is pretty good. The problem has always been execution as it relates to the trains and rough track work. I've ridden SLCs with updated vest restraints, and yes, they do eliminate headbanging, but those were still far from making this list. Great Nor'easter does have these new restraints, but that's not why it made the cut. During the 2016-2017 offseason, Maury's Piers teamed up with Vekoma to retrack 90% of the coaster. The park did a teasing campaign stating that the ride was smooth enough for your grandma to ride, and they were right. Great Nor'easter really is great as it's a glossy smooth experience with vest restraints and even some near-miss elements with the boardwalk's water slides as an added bonus. If all parks could do what the Maury's family did, the world would be a much better place. Number 8, Formula at Energylandia. Opening in 2016, Formula was basically the first time we got to see what new Vekoma was capable of. This is the manufacturer's Space Warp model, which is smaller than a lot of their other ride offerings while still packing in a mighty punch. It's got a snappy launch at the beginning that throws you into a blitz of three inversions and some airtime hills and a glossy smooth track. Because of the success of the Space Warp model, Vekoma went on to do the Hyper Space Warp, which is basically the same thing, except they replaced the launch with the lift hill and added a bit of an extension at the end. So far, the three Hyper Space Warps that have been built have all gone to China, but I highly suspect they would have placed right around here on the list. Shout out to Energylandia because they did a world a favor by trusting Vekoma enough to build Formula. Number 7, Vekoma Flying Dutchmans. This is the first of only a few older Vekoma models I wanted to include on this list, and these are actually great rides. This was essentially their first ever take on a flying coaster, and while it was a bit of an unreliable mess, the experience was quite good. Only three Vekoma Flying Dutchmen were ever built, with two left in operation. Those are Batwing at Six Flags America and Nighthawk at Carowinds. Now you'll notice that I didn't just include Batwing on this list, and that's because because I enjoy Batwing and Nighthawk pretty much evenly. The consensus among most enthusiasts is that Batwing has at least a solid reputation, whereas Nighthawk is considered one of the worst coasters in the world. How? I just don't understand that. I rode both only a few days apart in 2021, and I didn't think they rode all too different at all. Nighthawk was maybe slightly shakier, but generally speaking, roughness isn't an issue with this model. The problem some have has more to do with the uncomfortable seating setup where you're laying on your back on the lift hill and brake run. It's not a very fun time, but once the layout really kicks in, this is a great coaster. Number 6, Expedition. Everest at Disney's Animal Kingdom. I mentioned that I haven't ridden Guardians or Tron yet, but that's because the last time I visited Walt Disney World was in 2021. One Disney Vekoma I did get to do that I really wanted to highlight on this list was Expedition Everest. This is Animal Kingdom's lone roller coaster now, and it's a freaking good one too. On its own, the layout probably wouldn't warrant a spot on this list, but Disney with the gobs of money they have came up with a $100 million coaster, primarily due to the theming. They built a replica of Mount Everest and had the coaster fly in and out of it, even going backwards at points. It's the theming that really elevates this ride onto the 
the list because Disney went all out and made it a fully immersive experience. Number 5, Abyssus at Energylandia. One of two shockwave coasters Vacoma's built so far, the other being in China, Abyssus is a very long ride that I was pretty impressed with. A lot of enthusiasts seem to be disappointed by this coaster after it opened in 2021, stating that other new-gen Vacomas were far more intense. In some ways that's true, but in others you'll still catch yourself graying out multiple times on this ride. Abyssus is like if you took Formula and supersized it, amplifying all of its strengths. It does have one annoying trim break on the top half, but it's otherwise a superb ride. Good airtime, four fun inversions, and solid pacing throughout the layout. It's a ride that really shouldn't be getting any criticism in my opinion. Number 4, Phoenix at Fair Up Summerland. I really went back and forth whether I wanted to rank Abyssus or Phoenix higher on my list, but I ultimately sided with Phoenix because I think it's a coaster I could ride all day without getting bored. It's the first of Vacoma's Wildcat model, and though it wasn't as intense as a lot of people expected, it's got an outstanding variety of elements. RCDB says something like 14 points of airtime, three inversions, some fluid transitions, and it's about as smooth as they come as well. I was caught off guard by the fact that Phoenix isn't an intense ride at all, but supposedly that was intentional and it makes sense given the park's target audience, which are families. See, originally I would have called this a downside, but the more I rode Phoenix, the more I understood that that wasn't really the point at all. This is something that younger kids, teens, and adults will come off saying that was a ton of fun, and in my opinion that makes this a home run investment for this park. Number 3, Aftershock at Silverwood. I bet a lot of you didn't expect this to show up so late on the list. Aftershock holds two titles for me that prove just how good this thing actually is. It's both my favorite old school Vacoma and it's my favorite Vacoma period in the United States. Will that change when I ride Guardians and Tron? Maybe, but I wouldn't be so sure because they've got some serious competition. Aftershock is one of the last remaining giant inverted boomerang coasters left in operation. It began operation in 2001 at Six Flags Great America before being relocated to Silverwood in 2008 where the park has done a truly marvelous job taking care of it. This is something where when you're up close to the ride in person, you'll really begin to realize why these are so few and far between. The trains are bulky, the mechanics are complex, and the ride is ginormous. Yet somehow, Silverwood has managed to keep this ride running smooth enough so riders can fully appreciate the stupidly intense inversions both forwards and backwards. I hope the park can continue to maintain this ride to the extent that they have so that it can operate for many more years to come. Number 2, Let Coaster at Legendia. If Formula was the first time people recognized Vacoma's potential, Let Coaster was the ride where Vacoma unleashed that full potential. The model is known as the Bermuda of Blitz, and this has so far been the only one of its kind built. I'm guessing the reason why is because this thing is so intense, it's almost too much for a lot of people. Me personally, I love this ride's power, but it did mean I have to take short breaks between rides, which is not something I'd have to do for, say, Phoenix. Aside from the intensity, Let Coaster also has one of the greatest layouts I've ever seen for a ride of its size. The coaster only stands 131 feet tall, yet it has near flawless pacing from the moment it crests that lift hill to the moment you hit the final brake run. There's three very whippy inversions, some really strong airtime moments, and each valley in turn loads on the positive Gs. Originally, Let Coaster was my favorite Vacoma I'd ridden, but it's just not something I could lap nonstop all day long like I could with number one, Fly at Fantasia Land. We talked about Vacoma's first attempt at a flying coaster with the Flying Dutchman. Well, it was interesting seeing what they learned from the prototype and work that in with their new style and expertise. Fly is one of the few roller coasters out there where you could argue it's a perfect 10 out of 10 experience with theming included in that score. It's integrated into the park's steampunk theme section called Rookberg, which is so compact, so what happens is you end up flying right past buildings and walkways over and over again. Not not only does it create some brilliant near-miss moments, but it also makes it so that it's virtually impossible to memorize the layout. I rode this thing about a dozen times and still couldn't remember what was coming next. Now, with most rides, a constraint on land would prohibit them from building a truly memorable layout. Yet with Fly, I think they knocked it out of the park in every way. It's the only flying coaster with launches, the only flying coaster with sustained airtime, and as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the best coasters you'll ever ride when it comes to sustained positive Gs. If you want to ride what is currently Vacoma's magnum opus, I believe you should come to Fantasyland and experience what many believe is the best flying coaster ever built. But with that, I thank you all for watching today's video and will invite you to subscribe to Coaster Dash for more content like this in the future. If you enjoyed, be sure to give me a like and comment your favorite Vacoma coaster down below. Even if you're from America and haven't traveled overseas, we're starting to see more and more new gen Vacomas pop up throughout the country and hopefully this is successful enough to where they're built as frequently as they are in Europe and Asia. Until next time, I'll see you all in a future video. Bye guys.